How to use the dash. The dashboard is composed of a number of different tools that provide data which allow you to emulate the physical demands of the ride. The first and most important tool on the dash is the effort meter. The effort meter provides a graphical representation of how hard you should be working during a specific part of the ride. In this video, we're ascending a small climb while trying to keep a good pace for other riders behind us. Watch how the effort increases as we continue to ascend. The effort meter is color-coded to help you quickly know what zone you should be training in. Each zone is based on a percentage of your maximum effort. Be aware that the difficulty of each video is greatly dependent on the time spent in each zone. At the top of the effort meter is your heart rate goal displayed as a percentage of your max. Percent of max is calculated as your actual heart rate divided by your max. This value can be used to challenge yourself further by teaching your body how to precisely regulate efforts. Some heart rate monitors allow you to input your max heart rate and then automatically calculate your percentage of max. The gear ratio and resistance indicator provides you with two ways to determine what gear or what resistance you should be working at. The gear ratio is the best way to make changes in resistance if you're on your bike and trainer. With shifters you can quickly make changes to gearing to simulate changes in pedaling effort. This animation provides an idea of how the gear ratio works. Notice how above the blue line the numbers are ascending from 1 to 10. This corresponds to the gear that's in your rear cassette. Below the blue line are the two rings in the front, 42 being the small ring, 52 being the large. The resistance value is a tool to be used if you're on a spin bike. Most spinners are comfortable with a 1 to 10 scale used in classes. Basically, a 1 is a soft pedaling, easy spin resistance, whereas a 10 is a slow, leg-churning, difficult grind where you have to force the crank arms to turn. The cadence value allows you to identify what your pedaling cadence should be. While the cadence, resistance, and heart rate indicators attempt to synchronize, often it's difficult to match everything at the same time. Start out using either cadence or resistance while matching the effort goals. Much like the effort tool, the power tool provides a graphical representation of how much power the cyclist is producing during a given time. The power tool is a nice alternative or backup to the resistance and gear ratio tools. The dashboard has three graphs. These are a really cool way to find out where you're located along the timeline of the ride. The graphs are divided by a bar, showing you where you're located along them. The top graph displays a hill profile. The middle graph displays the effort profile and the bottom displays the power profile. Keeping your eyes on these are a great way to identify changes as they approach. The moving map provides some nice information about where you're cycling. Roads, topography, landmarks, rivers, lakes, and more can be identified so you don't feel lost on the ride. Also note, north is always up. I'm done. Have a great workout. Your audio track is set at the default narrative audio track. If you'd like to switch to just music, press your audio button on your DVD remote. Or, if you'd like to hear just the sounds of the road, press your audio button again for the third track.
Well, once again, welcome. This is the Mile of Hell. This was, uh, I was going to just start out as a fun little club ride that turned into a really tough workout. Um, I started this ride in Fort Collins, so I'm already warmed up in the video here and so the heart rates jump up pretty quick so I rode uh, about 10 miles to get to the start but uh, just warm yourself up slow the uh, warm up here is key and we'll warm up like the intro set for about an hour and then it gets pretty tough and I'd suggest uh, working your way through the warm up I wouldn't do just disc one and then tomorrow do disc two you can I mean, the hills aren't really there, right? So, always get yourself uh, prepared for a nice warm-up. Especially when the efforts are really high, like they will be here. Well, we're starting in Loveland, Colorado. We're about uh, 40 miles uh, north of the Denver Metro. And uh, it's uh, the Tri-City area. It's basically three cities, Fort Collins, Greeley, and Loveland, all within Oh, 10, 15 miles of each other. And uh, you wouldn't really know it, but there's a, a fairly good sized population out here. Uh, Loveland has a population of about 60,000. Fort Collins 
little over 120,000. And uh, really, I believe, is right around 40,000. And these uh, three cities make up the part of Poudre County. And uh, Loveland's got this great uh, bike group called uh, the Pedal or Pedal Bike Group, which is P-E-D-A-L. You can do a search on Google for them. Just Loveland uh, Bike Group, Pedal, something like that. And they'll, uh, they're the main group out, out there. The interesting thing about Loveland area and Fort Collins too are the number of clubs. Tons of cyclists. And it's not hard to understand why when you ride out here. It's just gorgeous. Well, let me introduce real quick some of the tools and you may have already watch these but just in case on the uh, dashboard at the bottom you'll see two graphs color graphs an upper and a lower the upper graph shows the hill profile and the lower graph shows the effort pretty much uh, everything in the red will be at uh, efforts of about 92% of max at the most. And everything in the green is in the aerobic zone, around 75%. Uh, and uh, for the most part, this uh, first disc is a gradual ascent nothing too horribly steep the group will every once in a while turn it on and we'll get our heart rate up to stay with them and as you can see we're spinning at a cadence of around 90 rpm at a fairly easy resistance as we're tucking in behind this nice tandem. And the gear ratio will fluctuate. And you can match those gear ratios. On the right. And uh, this is very, um, very arbitrary guide. Uh, it's not perfect. Everybody's trainer or spin bike or rollers will have different uh, resistance efforts based on uh, your gear. And uh, sometimes the recommended gear ratio might be too high. Sometimes it'll be too low. Other times it'll be spot on. So it all depends on what you're training on. If you're on a fluid trainer, pretty accurate. This ride is a bit of an anomaly in that uh, as we uh, go on, the Tell you what that bottle means but as we go on uh, the hills will get so steep that the uh, oh gear resistance is low in some cases if you're used to a uh, certain low resistance and gear ratio to keep you on target with your heart rate where a 10 out of 10 might not be enough based on what you're used to so 
you really have to put it into a, a really high resistance on your uh, spin bike or uh, add some resistance on your trainer if you have a magnetic type trainer. Basically what's uh, key on these hill climbs that we'll be hitting is the cadence value which you'll notice on the bottom left and if uh, your uh, cadence is too high you know on some of those climbs we're going to be running cadence of around 35 to 40 rpm and if you are at a cadence of 60 it's too too fast so if you have the luxury of adding more resistance to slow your cadence down while maintaining your target heart rate then that's what you should do right now it's pretty gentle cadence of 80 low gear ratio Just a little bit of resistance, keeping our heart rate in the aerobic zone. And all the other data there is just for fun. Speed and elevation, distance, total climbing. You acclimate yourself between miles and kilometers, feet and meters. And then on the far right is our GPS type map. This is showing a nice aerial view of the place that we're riding. There'll be a few landmark locations. Keep your eye on names of roads, towns, stuff like that. So you'll notice uh, the black line that goes from the top graph to the bottom graph, indicating our position along both. So you'll notice that we're in a nice green aerobic zone, and right ahead of it to the right, a little orange blot. We'll have a little acceleration there. So, prepare to adjust your cadence and your resistance accordingly, and watch for those changes in the heart rate. In Loveland, we'll talk a little bit about it. One, uh, one of the cool attractions out here is the sculpture gardens. Very unique to the area. Hundreds of sculpture exhibits that are located around the Loveland Lake. And every year they have a festival. Um, in August uh, called uh, Sculpture in the Park and people from all over the country or even all over the world come to exhibit their works and there's some really amazing stuff definitely worth checking out And even though we're at uh, 5,000 feet, uh, in August the temperatures get pretty warm. There's Loveland Lake there in the middle. 
That's where we stopped. And here we are. I'm uh, riding right along with you. So when the efforts change, I'll be changing them right along. Some sections I can't talk. And here's our little acceleration I was talking about. Heavier gear. Let's start driving towards that group up front, keeping it under control. And our heart rate up to about 80%. Eighty-five percent. Wasting a lot of effort into the wind by herself. Drive a little harder and get that wheel in the front. Okay, we're on, let's relax. Easy pedaling cadence, let's bring our heart rate down. There's another jump. Right up ahead. Oh yeah, water bottle. Means it's time to drink. So often we just forget. So the water bottle show up every five or ten minutes. Reminding you. So your mission, even if you've taken a drink, or if you don't even feel thirsty, that water bottle pops up, take a slurp from it. You gotta stay hydrated on this ride. It gets really tough, and the whole function of the ride will be de defeated if we're not hydrated. Here's our acceleration. So let's go ahead and drive it up bigger gear and get on this guy's wheel. I'll lift the effort. Probably close to 90% here.
somewhere around here I'm thinking we still got another 30 miles straight up let's back it off <laughs> So bring down your gear ratio, cadence. Keep the pedals turning. Slowly bring your effort back down. Into the lower 80s. Keeping your cadence right around 80, Catch my breath. Stay anaerobic. We're going to work up to a nice rhythm here. Not uh, too many accelerations. Just a nice steady cadence. And we'll stick that around. Uh, 84% of our max heart rate for the next oh, 10 or 15 minutes until we get into Masonville. So this is just uh, one of hundreds of Beautiful rides in Loveland. And the whole area is inundated with uh, amazing routes with lots and lots of roads just like what we're on. Low traffic, beautiful views. You've got uh, a great ride up to Estes Park. You should just follow Eisenhower Highway all the way up. Spectacular. Carter Lake is another tremendous ride. Not too much climbing. Great scenery. The lake is beautiful. It's in uh, the third series of training to endure called uh, From the Front Range into the Hills. It's a nice loop around that lake or past it. And then uh, it actually follows the same route that we're on right now. But instead of going to Masonville, it uh, goes east towards uh, Horse Tooth Reservoir, which is another really neat lake. And uh, not to mention Pinewood Reservoir, which uh, is an insane climb from Loveland to Pinewood. And that's uh, in another video called the Rattlesnake Bite. And it's about a 40 minute climb at grades 
from 10 to 14 percent probably. But the descent makes it worthwhile. And about uh, 30 or so miles, we'll be descending into the town of Bellevue, which uh, is a, about uh, five or six miles north of Fort Collins. And it's uh, uh, entry to the Risk Canyon. Uh, ride will be going on here and it's also the start of the Poudre River Trail which follows the Poudre River duh, all the way from Fort Collins into Greeley and out and back from Fort Collins to Greeley Ooh, about 65 miles maybe. In the springtime, lots of bugs. And uh, Bellevue also has a fairly large fish hatchery. And it's just a overall a cool place to visit, hang out. Very small town. But again, great rides. Horse Tooth Reservoir, Wrist Canyon, Poudre River Trail. Endless options. Here's a little climb. Pop it up into a bigger gear. Let's grind our way up it. We won't be standing up for any of these climbs. Just uh, feel your legs. Get them into the groove. Get a nice rhythm. Drive your heart rate up. Time for a drink. Just behind us on this road, a little alpaca farm. Go make yourself a itchy retro gold jersey.
Again, let's focus on cadence and heart rate. And we're almost to we're almost to uh oh crap. I can't remember the name of the town. Melville? Melville? No. <laughs> I'm sorry. My heart rate gets over 85%. My brain disengages. But, uh, and we're almost from our first rest. How about that? Little climb here. A little heavier gear. Drive that heart rate up. Just a little ways. And back down. And here's a nice descent. Soft pedal it. Or stop pedaling. Let your legs recover. Well, we're going to do a little different in this uh, workout. I don't know if you're used to my other or the other ones. Is uh, there won't be any soft pedaling on the descents. We're just going to stop pedaling, so when the cadence shows zero, stop pedaling. And we're also going to take advantage of all the rests, no pedaling through the rests. Just stop, rest, pause the video, walk away, get a drink, something cold, grab a banana, uh, some pretzels. And then come back to the video and start all over. It's not comfortable, but we'll get into the details why later. It's not comfortable starting cold, but we're going to be doing that. Well, let's start cranking back up. Real easy cadence here. Easy gear.
as we approach the town of Gulala. A little resistance, go up the hill. And start backing it off as we come to the top here. And we begin our final little jaunt into Masonville. We climbed about uh, close to 400 feet in about 10 miles, so not too bad. Take that rest. <laughs> 